Hello viewers and welcome back. This is The Model Guy and today I'm doing a tutorial on riveting your scale model aircraft. Why am I doing this? Because one of the questions that comes up frequently when I share pictures of an aircraft online is where do you find the blueprints to do it? This tutorial will show you how to, you can scale and print blueprints to be used as a reference. Once you master this skill, you will also be able to print off one-to-one -one scale camouflage masks. To keep this tutorial clear and concise, I've broken it down into five teaching points. The first one will be where to find the blueprints. The second one, how to find the scale of your blueprint. Third one, printing the blueprint at the new scale. Fourth, transferring the blueprint onto your scale aircraft. And finally, troubleshooting errors you may have. For you to follow along on this tutorial, you're going to need a few items, and they are a scanner, digital caliper or a ruler, riveting tool, electrical tape, scissors, or Photoshop, or any program that will allow you to change the output size of a printed image. Alright, our first step is where to find the blueprints. Easily enough, you can go online using the Google, or you can even find mechanics handbooks that have been published in the past. I like using Google because it's fast and efficient, and you can usually view a variety of photos. Ideally, I want one that's small enough that I can print to a single piece of paper. Uh, if it's too large, though, we can fix that. The P-47 we are using in this example is a very popular aircraft and not hard to find a decent reference photo of on Google. Here I found one of the side profile at about 5,000 pixels, so it's going to be a large photo. Uh, we can fix that easily, but once you have your photo, you want to save it to your desktop or somewhere you can find it easily to work with it. Now that I have this picture open in Photoshop, we're going to realize we have an issue right away because this size of this picture at 5,000 pixels is too big for my preview image. So what I do to even work with this is I'm going to reduce the size initially to about 25%. At this point, we're just trying to get the image to fit onto a regular A4 size piece of printer paper. If your image is smaller than this preview window or it fits properly, this is a step you can skip. You don't have to resize anything. You can just print the image off as it stands in Photoshop. Now that I've printed off the image, I pick a common point that is on the blueprint and on the scale model to measure. It's important to be accurate here as it'll affect your scale measurements and your math. I pick the panel line from behind the turbo cooling door to this section behind it. Once I've picked those two points, I'll use the digital caliper here to get a, a very accurate reading. I like to use the metric system because I'm Canadian, but if you're good with the Imperial, you can use that. So my initial measurement that I get here for the scale blueprint is 22.8 millimeters. Once you've measured twice, you can write this number down as your first number from the equation we'll need to find the ratio slash scale. Once you have the measurement from the blueprint, you're going to repeat the same process, but you're going to use the scale model. Here, using the digital micrometer and measuring the same two points on the scale model, I get the measurement of 19.1 millimeters. I know that says 19.0 millimeters, but the second time I measured, I had 19.1. Now that I have this measurement from the scale model and the measurement from the blueprint, we can create a math equation, which is going to be the scale model divided by the blueprint equals our scale. Now let's use that formula and plug in our measurements. So we're going to take 19.1 millimeters and divide that by 22.8 millimeters, and that gives us 0.8377. If we move our decimal point two places to the right, that gives us a percentage of 83.77%. Now that you know that percentage, you can go back into Photoshop, open the print options for that window, and where it says scale 100, you're going to now change that to say 83.77. Hit print, and you should now have a one-to-one -one scale of your blueprint. Hold it up next to your model and just verify. Now the next step is going to be transferring the blueprint onto the model. Ideally, you want to have your primer on and you want to have all the bodywork finished on the aircraft. Basically, you're ready for paint at this point. Take your blueprints, start cutting them into sections that you can manage. Here I have the first section and all I'm going to do is use a small mechanical pencil and lightly mark the wing to match where the rivets are on the sheet. Don't be afraid to erase this. I have OCD sometimes, so I'll take three or four attempts before I like where the lines are. Once I have the sheet positioned, again, trace where the location of the line is on the wing. You don't have to draw the whole line, you're just drawing a reference. 
Here you can see that I'm starting to run some longer rivet lines. So I'm actually using the electrical tape as a soft ruler to allow me to bend it over the wings and stretch it as needed to fit that wing properly. That way my rivet line is nice and straight. Now that you've drawn your reference lines on the aircraft, you can break out your Rosie the Riveter tool or whatever you're using for rivets and start following those lines. This is one of these things that'll take practice, practice, and more practice. And once you think you're ready to do it on the aircraft, practice a little bit more because at first you're gonna have some crooked lines and you're gonna hate yourself. So you're gonna to wanna to practice this on a model that you don't mind screwing up because trust me, you're going to screw it up. Here's how the left wing looks after just two hours of work with the riveter. It seems tedious, and that's gonna be a lot of time you spend on the model, but when you compare it to the right wing, it's time well spent, in my opinion. That will troubleshoot some issues you may run into when you're first trying this out. One issue you may have is that your blueprint is too big or incorrect or too small after you've printed it. If this is the case, re-measure to check your math. Measure twice, print once. But there may be an issue too where the model or the blueprint is not an exact match. On this Tamiya P47, the access door I initially used for a reference was completely different than the blueprint after doing the math. I figured out that the blueprint or the model was wrong. I corrected this by measuring several other areas and rechecking the math. The panel line I used in this tutorial worked perfectly. Another issue you may have is you print the blueprint, but it's still coming out the wrong size or a different size. You've measured different areas and it's an issue with printing. Are you starting with a scanned image? If you're trying to print directly from the web, you're probably running into issues with the DPI output of your image. If you scan the image directly into the computer, you have a paired paper in hand that you can measure. Trying to do this from a computer screen will not work. You have to scan the image first. That way you rule out any possibility of Photoshop or whatever program you're using of skewing that image. To review, here's your steps again. Step one, print off a blueprint that will work for you and scan it back into the computer. Step two, measure the blueprint and model at a common point. Divide the model measurement by the blueprint measurement for your percentage slash scale. Step three, print the scanned image with the percentage you have as a sum from step two. Step four, cut out the blueprints and mark the areas for rivets on the model. In conclusion, this is a model skill that will improve your work significantly. You can take an Airfix or Tamiya kit or any manufacturer and take that model to a new level. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you take the plunge to try for yourself. If you liked this tutorial, click the thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't like it, leave a message and let me know why. Thanks for watching and see you next time.